Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 72. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I tilted the camera a little <laughs> from the intro to now. But anyways, I'm going to hop into today. Um, again, this is another kind of short week because I've been super busy the last couple weeks. I do have one finished object and a couple of whips, and a couple of them are new whips. So I have three whips, I think, yeah. I've got some giveaway items to show you, and some mail, and some project bags. <laughs> and a sewing project that I wanted to share with y'all. But, um, yeah, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and hop into it because uh, there's not much to talk about this week. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, get into it. So I do have one finished object this week, and it is a Pokemon Amigurumi. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys play Pokemon Go on your phone, but me and Devin play it a lot and pretty hardcore. -ly. So, um, this, I forgot to move the ink. There's ink set back there. <laughs> but, um, this Saturday, uh, the 16th, is the Pokemon Community Day for February. And that's just a special day in the game where for a few hours during the game play, you can get special Pokemon and stuff. But this month's Pokemon is a little pig thing. <laughs> called um swin nub so i thought it'd be fun to crochet him and i found a pattern for him on rivalry for free well the link was on rivalry but it went through to the person who designed its um blog and that's what i will link below is the actual blog post but here it is <laughs> mine came out a little different than the pattern i didn't have enough space on his little body to put all the stripes he's supposed to have seven dark brown stripes but he only has five i think he's cute He's a little dirty because he's been all over the house. <laughs> Jesse's played with him. I've been carrying him around with me. Uh, yeah, he's cute. He's like a little pig. But yeah, I used all Red Heart Super Saver yarn for this. And it's uh, Cafe Latte. I think the top one's chocolate or coffee or chocolate or something like that. And the nose is a little tiny piece of um, petal pink or something like that. His nose is a little crooked. That's okay. And his eyes are just embroidered on, because uh, that's how he looks on the game. If I could think about it, I'll pop up a picture of how he looks on the game. Because um, he's just cute. He, These should be a little bit lower, because he rounded out a little bit more. He should be flat on the bottom. But I overstuffed him a little. But this little stuff right here is the fur that's supposed to be like dragging the ground when he, when he scoots around. But I still think he's adorable. And Saturday, when we go to the park to walk around for community day, I'm going to put him in the car, <laughs> like in the window, so people can see it. Just as a cute little decoration or whatever. But yeah, I think he's adorable. He was super quick. I made him in one setting while watching um, podcasts, trying to catch up on some videos. So I made him uh, maybe an hour and a half or so of working on him. Super cute and easy. But yeah, if you're a Pokemon fan, you'll like that. If you're not, you, you just think it's a little critter but until community day which is tomorrow he's been living in the living room but jesse has played with him some and then i i, I just like him so i, I came around every now and i just pick him up and love on him because he's adorable but yeah that's my only finished object this week i do have let's see here i have one whip coming over from last week and um two new ones yeah so i'll go ahead and talk about the original whip uh, actually, I have a couple more whips that I'm literally about to start. I was, I started one today, but I already frogged it because I didn't like the holes that was being made in the pattern, so I'm going to make a different one. So, but anyways, this is for the fair, our county fair that comes up. Um, this year it starts on the last day of August and goes a week into September. So, I have to have all my fair entries done by the last week of August so I can get them put in there. This is going to be one of my fair entries. This is, they have an entry that is uh, stuffed pillows and it can be any kind of pillows that you handcrafted, just that, you know, they got to be stuffed. <laughs> so I'm making a, um, this is upside down. <laughs> I'm making a big giant pillow. It's come out way bigger than I thought it was going to be, but it's going to be really pretty. There's going to be like applique scene on here. It's Christmas scene. The original scene for the design is a big stack of presents. But I haven't settled on what I want to do yet. Uh, I really could do any appliques on here to decorate it as a Christmas scene or a winter scene, whatever. But yeah, so this is the front panel. And I did start the second panel. I think it's in this bag. Yeah. I was working on this also. The day I actually made uh, the little Pokemon. I was working on this first before I got the idea to make the Pokemon. So this is just the, uh, the back panel. And it'll be, I'll do the whole white part again. 
and then fasten it off and then do the blue part again and that's the gap in between the white and blue is what will make the hole for you to put a pillow insert in. So this is just regular Red Heart Super Saver white. Uh, I gotta do 40 something rolls of white single crochet back and forth so that's taking me a while just because it's boring. But uh, I'm hoping to get that done soon because I want to enter this in Nicola Durab Dur Creations uh, color work cow because this front panel is color work. And the yarns I used for it, this white, you can't really see it that good. Let me see if I can hold it up. It is Karen, Karen, what is it, what is it? Karen Party or something like that. Karen Simply Soft Party. And it's called uh, Snow Sparkle. And then the red is Red Heart Super Saver Cherry Red. And the blue is Red Heart Super Saver Light Blue. And these little snow flakes are also the same yarn as down here. I made the front sparkly, but the back is just going to be solid because it's the back. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get this done, and then i got to buy a pillow form for it or make one. I have a bunch of stuffing now because I was gifted some, so I might be able to just make my own um, form. I don't know. We shall see. But yeah, that is super cute. It is a free pattern on the Love Crochet website, and it's called the Cozy Christmas Cushion by Love Crochet. And yeah, there's also a blanket pattern that matches it. But it is paper pattern. It's really pretty though. I'd love to have it one of these days. I might buy it and make it. But um, yeah, there's a random sock on the table. Let's see here. What's my next whip? Okay, I'll talk about this one just because it happens to be on top. This one I started, um, I don't even know when, a few days ago. And actually, I wanted to sit down and do the whole thing. It's, it's one of the little projects. Every now and then I pick out a little project just to kind of fill in time when I'm waiting for something. But as soon as I started it, I ended up getting busy and having to immediately quit. But this is a Christmas ornament, and I've made one before. And I was making it because, one, I want to make Christmas ornaments this year. And two, uh, I wanted to enter it into Becky's uh, crochet along she's hosting on her Ravelry group for Christmas ornament make-along thingy. <laughs> and this is part of it. And then I started the, the other part. It's, it's hard to explain. But this is uh, Red Heart Super Saver Bright Yellow. This is, I'll pop up the picture of the one I made last year. It's a bell ornament, and then um, this is like the inside of the bell part where the, the actual, the jingly part of the bell would be. Um, so I'm going to put a little jingle bell in there to make it jingle, and hopefully Jesse won't rip this one off like he did last year, the other one. But, uh, so I just wanted to make these because I thought that one ornament last year was super cute, and I wanted to make some more of them. So I thought I'd make another yellow one, and then I might make two silver ones because I love the song Silver Bells, and I love the movie. There's a Hallmark movie called Silver Bells. So I just wanted to make some bells for my tree. And, uh, yeah, so here's one started. <laughs> but, yeah, this, I need to wind this into a ball because it's kind of, ugh, everywhere. But that is called, what is that called? Christmas Bell Ornament by a name that's hard for me to pronounce. I think it's Margel, Mar, Margeline Flick. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. But it is a free pattern. My last whip is um, the third square for the Unraveled Mittens 2019 Scrap Square Afghan or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. But it is a really cool one. I just started it a little while ago. I was watching The Good Doctor on Hulu. And I was like, you know, I haven't started that. So I'm going to sit down and figure out, you know, I'm going to read the pattern and then start making it. So I did start making it. Let me pull my hook out. I'm still using my bunny hook. <laughs> and I'm using bright colors. My first square was green. was Red Heart Super Saver Spring Green. My second, gray, my second square was Red Heart Super Saver pumpkin I think it was I'm gonna to try to stick to red heart super saver just so that this the weights are the same because you know everybody knows that just because it's a size four doesn't mean it's the same size because that's like red heart super saver is much thicker than I love the charm so I'm gonna to try to stick to red heart super savers and then I decided today that I'm gonna to stick to brighter colors because I want a big bright blanket so I used the, the green and the orange so this week this square I'm only like a fifth of the way done let me pull up some slack so I don't pull my stitches out I'm using, oh, <laughs> this is Red Heart Super Saver, um, hot pink and bright yellow, I think is what it's called, but I can't remember what this is called, let's see here, this is the boxed block square, <laughs> block, boxed block square, it's a really simple, simple pattern, I really like this actually, and this would be a really quick pattern for a blanket or anything really, and at first I was cutting the ends and then I realized I could just, um, carry them up the side because I got to put a border on it anyways and that'll help hide the floats 
So I have a bunch of ends right there, but from this one on, I'm just gonna carry them. But yeah, so, oh, I keep dropping it. This is all I've got so far. But I really like this stitch. It's really simple. It looks a little bit more complicated than it is. And I love stitches like that because it makes the work look beautiful, but it's really easy to pump out. So I think I can get this squared down super quick and I probably would have finished it today if I hadn't have. One, I wanted to do a sewing project that I'm gonna show y'all in a minute. And two, I wanted to film. <laughs> so, oh, I'm shaking the camera a lot, I'm sorry. But yeah, I think this is gonna be real cute. And then I have no idea. I think I'm gonna use a blue color for the next square unless it's another multicolor one. And then I might use blue with the green or maybe a purple or something. I don't know. I have to wait till two weeks to see what the square is. But I thought this would be cute in pink and yellow. And I started it with yellow. So there's like a lot of yellow at the bottom. So I'll probably finish it with more pink. So that it, there's more pink and, oh, you know, it's more even. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do the border in yellow or pink yet. Probably... I don't know, I guess it depends on what color the last row is. Because the last row is yellow, and there's more yellow at the top. I'll do the border in pink. I don't I'll have to figure it out <laughs> when I get there. But yeah, I think this is a really cool looking stitch. It's real simple and fun. I like it. And it's a brainless stitch. So if you did make an afghan or something out of this, you could watch TV easily while doing it. Because I was watching, like I said, The Good Doctor. And um, I wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing. And I didn't actually mess up <laughs> that I know of. But yeah. So that is all of my whips, and I got yarn everywhere. Leave that there because I don't have it in a project bag. <laughs> Both of the, the yarns I'm using for that square are the big jumbo skeins, so um, it can't fit in a project bag. I mean, I could squeeze it in one of my sack shaped ones, but I don't want to have to carry it around. I'm just been, I'll probably finish this up tonight if I can get the free time to. Anyways, I just babbled a lot. That is all my whips and stuff. So I do want to show you a finished object that's sewing one. I'm super excited about this because I'm going to start selling these in my shop. This was the first one, so the top stitching is a little wonky. Um, I've actually, when I cut this one out I've, and sewed it, now I know to change the dimensions a little bit to um, make it one easier for me to put the hardware into the bag and two to make the bag slightly larger. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to show it to you. I'm super proud of it. It's a new Notions pouch that I'm going to start selling in my shop. This is just some scrap material that I had from a project bag I made. But what's cool about it is the opening is up here, and you squeeze it to open it. There is a, uh, oh, it's called a flex frame hardware in there. So it's like, it's metal, but it's um, flexible metal. So it's kind of like those old coin purses that I know were huge in the 90s, and I'm sure they were huge before that too, but I remember having them in the 90s. And uh, so there's just hardware in there that you just push on and it opens. It doesn't seal perfectly. Like I wouldn't put loose, noodle, noodles, <laughs> loose needles in here, but I've got a bunch of stitch markers in there right now, and they're not coming out. But if I were to, they did come out. <laughs> I like this a lot. And now see, I use the little kid scissors that they sell around back to school time. I keep a, a bunch of them so I keep them in different project bags. They are just too big for this. So that's one thing I'm going to change about the dimensions is I want to make it a smidge longer and a smidge, probably the same width. I like the width because it covers up the hardware pretty good. There's a little bit of it right there, but that's where you squeeze it at. So I think that's good. But I'm going to start making them a little bit longer so that I can fit my scissors in there and my stitch markers and then like a little bag or one of those little needle keepers or something in there. Tape measure, any of those little notions that you don't want f falling all over your needles. So let me, let me dare out one of my... Okay, this is the notion pouches size that I normally make with a zipper. So if you have your hooks down in here, I don't have a, oh, I do have a hook right here. If your hooks are in there and then you can put your stitch markers or needles or scissors or whatever in this and it'll fit in there if I can get it to go in there <laughs> it'll fit in there so you could keep both of them in a project so you can keep your hooks separate so like if you you don't want to have to dig through the bigger bag to find your stitch marker or your tape measure or whatever you can just grab out your little notions pouch and do it that way or you don't even need a big one you can just keep your hooks in the big one but then keep your hook you're using for your current project in the bag with your project 
and then chuck this down in there with the stitch markers and scissors and tape measure and yada 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 all that little stuff yeah and I thought about maybe eventually even making some that are long enough to hold hooks they'd have to be about that long a little bit longer for space <laughs> but yeah I really like it and it is lined on the inside and I have a ton of scraps from pretty much any project bag I've ever made and sold on Etsy I have scrap material <laughs> in this bin back here of it like this so here I made bags of this and um, I chose this fabric to play with because I really like it and I thought I could keep the first one uh, as like my prototype but yeah I'm super proud of this little bag and I think it's awesome I love that the nothing comes out but like I said if you had uh, loose um, weaving in needles in there they would probably fall out but if you had one of those things like Karen makes to hold needles or if you had um, I keep my needles I don't have my bag with me but in a little tiny zipper bag that I got at Goodwill or somewhere and that would even fit in here because it's really it's not lined or anything it will fit you know it would roll up and fit in there so yeah I think these are cool so I will be putting these in the shop pretty soon but not right now because I've been sewing all week that I'm not gonna sew at all this weekend this is the last thing I've sewed for a while and this actually only took um, less than 30 minutes to make uh, I imagine they would take less time next time because I won't have to keep watching a t video tutorial on how to do it right and all that so yeah and these um, hardware they're called flex frames it took me forever because I knew what I wanted I wanted the bags that you could open like this but I had no idea what those things were called so when I was trying to google it to see what they were called to look them up I was typing in everything I was like bags you squeeze to open and it was bringing up some weird stuff but not what I wanted but I finally found I was trying to think of what to call it so I think I typed in flex um, bag or I don't know it somehow I somehow finally popped it up and I found a seller on Etsy that had one uh, lot left of 20 of them so I went ahead and bought them <laughs> And uh, they just came yesterday. No, they came today. No, they came yesterday. Yeah, I didn't have time to sell yesterday. So I just went ahead and um, made this today. But yeah, I'm excited about this. I love this little bag and I think it's perfect. It is interface, so it is thicker. It feels almost quilted, you know, but without the quilting, obviously. And I could probably even make them with a heavier interfacing to make, them, make it stiffer if someone wanted it. But I think it's good. I like it a lot. But anyways, that's a lot about that bag. So I'm going to quit talking about that bag. Put my hook over here so I don't forget. Alright, I did get some things in the mail. And I also bought something for a future giveaway that I wanted to show, share with you guys. First, I got a Valentine's Day card. <laughs> you did it to show. From Melanie at Stitch to My Lou. So thank you, Melanie. I love it. Then I got a little package from... <sighs> Teresa. From Little Tree's Treasures. She sent me some stitch markers you're not going to be able to see them good because of the glare and then she also sent me some extra beads to make my own stitch markers which I thought that was cool and then she sent me and Jesse both little buttons this is the one she sent Jesse. it's like a monster face <laughs> and then she sent me a unicorn these are like Valentine's she said she, she found them and thought they were cute but they're buttons like you know that you pin on stuff <laughs> and she's also made a little angel ornament let me try to It's, it's kind of folded weird because I'm not a good shower offer. <laughs> but it's a little angel. I think that's cute. I'll probably put that in my Christmas ornaments. I got another package from Claudia from Crochet Luna. She sent me a button and then she sent me two buttons to give away. And also, I still have some of her other buttons that she sent me last year for a giveaway that I actually forgot to give away. So they'll be going into some giveaway this year. Uh, either for the crochet along when it ends or if I hit a milestone that I feel like deserves a giveaway. But this is the one she sent me. <laughs> Which is funny since I'm on a yarn diet. But um, And all her buttons come with tea and sometimes a piece of candy and right here it's got stitch markers. It looks like there's something else in there. Let's open this. Ah. Alright, let's see. Oh, Little um, temporary tattoos <laughs> of llamas oh and a valentine's day card oh that's the count it says your llama amazing she actually put my name on it because this is the one that was meant for me and then she always puts a business card in there but yeah so the two that she sent me to put in my giveaway stash 
is blown out, but it is a spring crochet yay to put on a spring project. And then another one that says good yarn vibes and it's got yarn balls on it. So these will be going into my thing of other buttons from her to give away this year from different giveaways. And then I did buy one thing. Today I went to Walmart to look at their um, Valentine's Day clearance stuff because I wanted to look at the stickers <laughs> for my planner and stuff. And I did get a bunch of stickers. All these sticker sheets were originally 97 cents so they were like 46 cents on sale something like that so i got a bunch of those for myself but then i also found two of these these are meant for teacher gifts but once you actually open it there's no um mention of teacher on the stuff so the only place it says something about teacher is on the, the label right there but it's a clipboard with two notepads in it and the big notepad just has hearts on it and the little one says notes and the clipboard is like confetti uh, I bought two because one I wanted one. I needed a clipboard really bad, and I love no paper. Anybody, you know, anybody can use no paper. And then I went ahead and grabbed another one because I thought it'd be a, a cool giveaway thing because you could use it, you know, to keep um, patterns on or graphs or something that you have to mark on a lot when you're crocheting. And then no, you know, everybody can always use no paper. <laughs> and they're just they just got hearts and stripes on them. So the only thing that mentions teachers is uh, this sticker, which I could just peel off, or whoever wins it can ignore. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was neat. And they were only two dollars and something each, so I thought that would be a uh, good giveaway item for a future giveaway. Yeah. All right, all that's out of the way, and I got a random hook. Let me put that back in my project bag before I forget it. I know that goes in that one. All right, the last thing I want to talk about today is um, project bags in my shop. <laughs> Some of them I've already sold. Um, I posted on Instagram and on my Facebook group about when I updated my shop on Thursday. Um, all the llama bags have already sold, I think. And the cat bags have sold. So all the ones that are still left in the shop. Um, the new ones. There was already some in there. Uh, some Pokemon ones and uh, some green ones. So let's see here. So I got two sets of box bottom spring flowered ones. And they do come with notion pouches. <laughs> one each, of course. I've got one set left of this cute puppy dog print. Super adorable. And there's its notions pouch. And then I have two sets of this print, but one is a uh, box bottom. And one is a sack. I prefer the sacks better because they're bigger. You can get more stuff in there. They use the same amount of material as the boxed ones, but they have more space. I know a lot of people like the box bottoms, but I like the sacks personally. And then they're notion pouches. And then I have two of the butterfly print. I love this material. It is so pretty. And these are both sacks. I love this color. It's just such a pretty color scheme. And notion pouches. But yeah, so those are in the shop, and there's a couple other bags that have already been there for a little while. If you're interested, go check it out. The link will be below. Another thing I want to mention before I close. <laughs> I just got an email a couple hours ago. I was sitting and working on something. I think I was when I was crocheting. Um, from Knit Crate, finally. And it's, it was a shipping uh, confirmation to my P.O. box. So I think they are going to ship my Knit Crate to my P.O. box this month. I don't know where December's and January's went unless they put them outside the door and someone took them, which is completely understandable in my neighborhood because my apartment complex is not the best one. <laughs> and um, I do have some neighbors that I could totally see taking packages, especially December's because December's was sent out in that sparkly red bag. And, um, being around December, someone might have thought that it was something valuable that was ordered um, and stole it. But anyways, I'm not even worried about it. I did get someone to gift me Decembers and Januarys, which are still in my stash. I definitely am going to make a hat out of Decembers. I just got to find the perfect pattern. I don't want to waste it on a not perfect pattern. And then the Januarys, which is that pretty rose color. I have no idea what I'm going to make with that, but it's going to be for me. <laughs> Whatever I make is going to be for me because I love that color. So they're just sitting over there waiting for their turn to get used. And then I will use them as soon as I can get good patterns for them. But yeah, I'm looking forward to finally getting another knit crate and to be able to share it with you guys. 
Uh, I don't even know what February's Nick Crates look like. I haven't even looked because of all the Nick Crate drama that's been going on. <laughs> it's not bad stuff. It's just, I don't know if my, my boxes have been getting stolen or if they've been getting lost or whatever. Uh, I had heard that people couldn't get them to P.O. boxes, but then when I was talking to the guy who runs it, he kept trying to send it to my P.O. box, and I would think if they couldn't go to P.O. boxes, he would know that. <laughs> But I guess we'll see if I don't get the one that I got the email for today. I will know if it didn't come, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to hop off here and try to get this edited and up tonight so I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Because like I said, it's the community day, so we'll be gone half the day playing Pokemon and stuff. And um, I don't know what else we'll get into this weekend. Devin's off work, so we'll probably get into some fun stuff. And yeah, I think that's everything. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.